morning cohort two fall 2023 uh here it is the light at the end of the tunnel our last uh, week together so to speak um it is the last week of the cohort uh this is our last tuesday tune in i hope you've enjoyed uh um watching them as much as i've enjoyed making them i really um uh, uh think that there is value in trying to find ways to personalize not only the context of the course, but the interactions between the instructor and the student. And this is just one way uh, to do it. So I hope that maybe you've taken a, it sparked an idea in you on something that you can do in your courses, and, and that's important. So anywho, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about where we've been, and that's module seven was our last thing that we needed in, um, as well as module, uh, module six. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the dad joke in Module 6's uh, expectations assignment. For those of you that haven't submitted it, I will let you get there on your own. But uh, anyway, I apologize. That's just where I am in life is, is uh, I'm always one word away from a dad joke. Uh, <laughs> module, uh, module 7, which was due Sunday, uh, I saw some really good submissions had some folks talk about when they were submitting their Module 7 workbook around assessment practices and finding ways to have meaningful assessment and having student collaboration activities. Some of you expressed some interest in, in doing that but weren't sure where to get started. And I would tell you to reach out to your instructional designers. Uh, leverage that link that we've got in the um, Module 8, and I'll talk about that in just a second, to contact the ID team and they'll get back to you and discuss things that can work in your context. The good news about your IDs is they've worked with you know tons of your colleagues, and so they uh, have examples that they can share of things that they've seen do well, uh, or some of them are just you know they've been teaching too. So uh, lean in uh, to your instructional designers. I would also tell you that there are great resources for collaborative assessment out there on the interwebs. So leverage that cognitive surplus that's out there and see what works in your own discipline. Trust me, you'll find something. I, I, I guarantee it. Um, beyond that, uh, the uh, nine principles activity. Golly, I always love the responses for that. Uh, for instance, one of your responses from one of you talked about how you wanted to focus a little bit more on the process of learning uh, to make sure your students are, are making meaningful strides. And I thought that was super valuable to want to, to lean into how are they, how are they getting there, right? At, what is their process? How can I make my course better to make their getting there better? Getting beyond even the, the, um, the SLO or whatever, but how are they making the jump? How are they making the leap? And I thought that was uh, worthwhile. Also, another one that I really liked, uh, someone talked about the, uh, inter having to want to put some more interdisciplinary stuff in their course. So, you know, maybe for example, if you're uh, someone who's thinking about teaching in one subject matter, but finding ways to learn about how it can help by teaching in another. Uh, so I thought that was important too. There are many of you that have strengths across the board in this and uh, in that particular activity. And I hope by reading through some of the posts from this cohort and some previous cohorts that I've left in there for you, that you'd be able to see um, how some people are doing the, each of those principles. And I hope you took some value from that. So that's good news. All right, so on to our last week together. It's so sad. Uh, anyway, um, let's talk about week modulate uh, support services. Uh, obviously, uh, this week, it's across two due dates. The first couple activities are due on uh, Thursday, I think, and the last one's due on Friday, or it's Wednesday and Thursday. One of the two, I've forgotten exactly how. Oh, it's the 16th and 17th. So... Um, obviously that's how we're doing it. So anyway, the first one is the three states, it's three statements journal, and that's pretty self-explanatory. I want you to kind of have a reflective exercise about, you know, the things that you felt were most applicable to you. And then once you're done with this exercise, maybe write it down for yourself so you know where to focus back. And, and what do you want to know more about? Lean into us for that, right? Send an email to us, set up some one-on-one -on -one, uh, maybe by appointment training that we can work with you on or work with your ID or just do some more research around the thing that's interest to you. Um, and then uh, just submit it and uh, we appreciate it. We kind of look at it as a way for us to strive to do better too in your, by looking at that journal. Uh, beyond that, uh, a big one is our discussion show and tell. And this is kind of a, an evidentiary thing, right? We want you to post something that you've been working on in the context of the things you've been picking up inside this cohort. 
and, and maybe it's something you started working on before, but it still dealt with the things that were in this cohort. And Post-it is that evidentiary, that, that, uh, that piece of fact uh, info around these practices that we've all been talking and discussing about. So finally, uh, the last two activities after that are your instructional designer meeting and the post-assessment activity. The instructional designer meeting, uh, we want you to reach out to the ID support team via this email and say, hey, I need to, as part of this assignment, you can look at it here just to see, but you reach out and set up a meeting with your designer. That, depending upon where you are, that meeting may not be long at all. It may be a phone call, it may be an email, the whole nine yards, but reach out to them so you can set up a time because they put the point value in the gradebook for this particular assignment. So it's important that you do reach out and then you come back and say that you've submitted it so you know that it's there to grade. So when they come in, they can just go and, and grade and add your points for that. So uh, this is one of those gateway things for uh, this particular program. You cannot pass go, you cannot collect $200 no, we're not playing Monopoly. Uh, but you can't, you can't earn your certification without the, this particular project. So lastly is the post-assessment. Really kind of reevaluating where we were at the beginning of the course with the pre-assessment activity. Kind of and, and, and comparing you know, how we did on those. So um, if you don't mind filling that one out. And then, golly, y'all, it's, it's been great. The, the course has been great. So wanted to show you one more thing before we go. And that is to keep tabs on changes. Um, Ultra is changing at what I would consider a very rapid rate. And by changing, I mean feature rich, like adding more depth to it that could be useful for you. So just know, um, for instance, that uh, you can find out what's coming and what is, um, what is uh, 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 already here. Remember, go to your organization, and I think I probably talked about this before, but I wanna rehash it with you. Go to your support organization uh, uh, in, in, in Blackboard for instructors and uh, scroll down to What's New in Ultra and the Blackboard Learn Ultra Roadmap. In the What's New in Ultra, you'll be able to see all the new features coming in December, for instance, right? So this is a big one. Uh, uh, the AI design assistants help with journal pro uh, discussion and journal prompts is gonna be a big deal um, come uh, um, are, uh, come the, 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 uh, the time for come December. There's another one coming for assessment prompts or assignment prompts um, uh, in January. So be on the lookout for that. But you can learn about the stuff coming in December by clicking any of these links. And then you can look at the stuff that we already have. So check out November's changes that came through and learn about those things. Uh, but these are here for you. Also remember that all the webinars that we offer, we record. So if you happen to miss our most recent ultra-related recordings, for instance, we did one on rubrics, effective and uh, in informative grading, and then the effective use of learning modules and ultra courses. Both of those are there along with the slide decks and along with some hopefully helpful information. We will be in support of the, uh, the move to um, uh, uh, ultra for everybody else. On the, and what I'm doing is I'm pulling up a document that uh, I'm going to share with you. I haven't launched it yet in terms of how you can register, but um, in, in support of our transition to Ultra for the last three schools, we're, we've already planned out the entire spring webinar. I haven't posted the webinar schedule yet, but each month we're going to do what we call the Ultra Pack, which is, um, it really starts out with planning for your Ultra course view, then it's content creation, communication and engagement, um, uh, assessment tests and strategies, and then grading and tracking student performance and process. Those five courses are the ultra pack. I wanted it to be a six pack, but I couldn't kind of find my way there, so it was just a five pack. I'd be okay with a five pack, I mean, honestly. Uh, my abs will never look like that. We'll just leave it there. Uh, but anyway, just be on the lookout for this. After Thanksgiving, I'm probably gonna end up sending out an email letting you know that the spring uh, webinar schedule is posted and that um, uh, feel free to start signing up for those things. So I say all that, and I just wish you well, knowing that you've got uh, resources that you can lean on, that, that my team, our team is here uh, to help you with any of the how-tos you might have, any of the, maybe some, you have some questions about online teaching competencies or anything like that, we're gonna be here to support you. Your instructional designers are there every step of the way, and then our support desk. Uh, you know that they're going to be able to, you're going to lean on them for your students. You don't have to be technical support. You don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So anyway, you guys have been great. 
I look forward to reading your, uh, your assignments and activities that you submit this week. And really just happy teaching, and I hope you have a good rest of your fall semester, and uh, take care.